All right, so here's Tom. Tom, awesome tra trailer. So we were talking earlier and you were telling me a little bit about you know your suspension and all that, but I wanna just give you free reign. Why don't you just tell us a couple of things about it and we'll start walking around. Okay. Well, one of the first things I'd like to say about the VRV Flyer is that we're really trying to move into what I consider to be an adventure class vehicle. Okay, this is not just a hard surface pull down the road vehicle. And if you take a look around us today, we're up here in a national forest area. We've just come up two miles of dirt road and we're on top of a beautiful mountain. And that's because this vehicle is actually designed to, uh, to be able to handle that type of terrain. Yep. Uh, some of the things that I would like to tell you that we've done to the VRV Flyer uh, to guarantee that type of uh, problem for use is that number one in our tongue, we've done a double uh, aluminum tube uh, tongue member here. The basic frame and everything back to this point is all structurally uh, pretty sound in the way that the box is configured. This is an all aluminum, all aluminum, <laughs> all welded framed unit. Yeah. Uh, there's no screws, no fasteners at any point in this frame that hold it together. Every joint in this unit is actually welded. Well, to go along with that box feature, we wanted to beef up the subframe as well. And that's the reason why we doubled that tube member uh, in the front. One of the things that we did up here in the front area of the unit to go along with the, the tube uh, structure of the tongue was we did a quarter inch ATP tongue plated uh, area over this A-frame. Now this is to be for a purpose of accessing the roof or if somebody wants to mount a spare here yeah. or if they want to carry a portable generator here or any type of gearbox that they want to mount, they can do that right here and it'll be protected and out of the way and definitely adds to the structure uh, in doing that. Uh, we went with a 24 inch ATP rock guard in the front, which we then cover and seal with this aluminum J mold, all powder coated black. Yep. And then one thing I'd really like to point out to you is, as you walk around the VRV, you're gonna find that we don't use any kind of exterior sealants, no silicones or anything like that in our scenes. We actually use rubberized automotive beadwork uh, to seal these areas. This means that for 10, 15 years of service, you don't ever have to worry about resealing your unit to keep water or dirt out. And that's a big thing, especially in climates like Colorado and other places where it's really dry. Yes. It just really, that stuff just takes a pounding. Yes. It doesn't collect dust. It doesn't weatherize after a while and you have to strip it all out and then reseal it. This is actually good for 10 or 15 years of service right here before it has to be replaced. And once you have to, all you have to do is just basically remove the screws and just pull this J mold out a little bit. You can pull the beadwork out and put new beadwork back in and reseal it. Yep. And this is all one piece or something. Like this yes. is all coming here. Yes. And you can stand on this. Yes, absolutely. The box structure of the unit is all one separate cage, welded itself uh, together. Then what we do is we set it on this two by two aluminum frame, A-frame mm -hmm. right here, and we weld the box down to the A-frame. Um, that, that serves two purposes. Number one, it doubles the strength, the structural integrity and strength of the, of the base of the unit. Uh, number two, it does serve, and what I liked about it so much, is that it serves as a fender step. It protects your fender from any kind of road debris or hazards on the road that might take your fender out like those orange cones that you encounter on the interstates all the time. But the other thing is, is that it gives you access to your roof. And the reason why that's so important is in every VRV flyer roof, the first three inches on each side is actually a one by three aluminum tube that we weld into here. And that's so that you can put down roof rack track systems. You can just screw them directly into the roof and it's fully supported. For anything that you wanna carry up here from uh, mountain bikes to kayaks, canoes, or, or even putting a, a rack uh, type uh, uh, system up here, a basket yeah. rack, you can do that up here as well. Or for the folks that have a family of four, you can put a rooftop tent. Yep, rooftop open, tent. Open it up, you come set up, Mom and dad can sleep inside and you got an awesome place for the kids and a tree house on top. Absolutely. But you can gain access up there without yeah. having to carry much along with you to, to get up to that. Yeah, this that is key. Point. This is awesome. That, and this can handle any weight. Oh yeah, that, that can handle any weight. That's two by that's quarter inch sidewall, two by two tube as well. Okay. Um, to go along with the fender step uh, and the fender, as you'll see, just like we did in the front, we applied the uh, rubberized automotive beading in here to seal the uh, joint between the fender and the body. Yep. 
and that keeps debris, dust, and dirt out, and you don't have to worry about changing that out. So in this model, I see you got some tires that are off-roadable, but is it, can someone, if they wanted a bigger tire to match their Toyota or their Jeep, can they put that on there to match? Yes, absolutely. With the flyer, one of the options that we make available to the customer when they uh, order their unit is that we do a Jeep style fender as well. And with the widening uh, angle of the Jeep style, they're 33 inches at the, at the outermost point. You can put on 31 inch, 32 inch, probably up to 33 inch tires on there if you wish. Because the fender sets above the axle line and, and the height it. of the tire. Um, another thing I wanted to show you here, and I, I'm sure that this is the case with everybody in the electronic world, you cannot have enough outlets. So outside we actually put a GFI outlet out here uh -huh. uh, on the outside to access to be able to run power uh, off your unit to anything that you may be doing out in this area for entertainment purposes or anything. Plus our LED lighting porch light and all of our outside uh, running lamps are all LED as, as well. And the detail is just awesome. I, I love this metal piece that's coming down and holding the light. You, you know that's not going to go anywhere. Right. It's sturdy. LED is going to last forever. It's not going to burn out on you. Actually, one thing, what is this for? Get a little ah. hook there. Okay. These little uh, clips, these are to receive the clips on the outer room. That okay. is an option for the uh, flyer as well. Uh, with the flyer, we have a sleeved outer room that works over the back end of the unit, works around, and actually ties down around the unit. It's a freestanding dome tent. It's eight and a half by eight and a half with a six and a half foot ceiling in it. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to open up this door here and it doubles your living space. Well, there are straps on that that we secure to the fender here. And also you'll find that there's a set of them on the roof that you clip in up there. And that keeps the tent from being able to blow away in case the weather turns bad or anything like that from the unit. So basically you thought of everything. We tried to. <laughs> we tried to. That's awesome. So that doubles your, your living space. Weather is bad. You can sit under enclosed area. Mm -hmm. As I was talking about weather earlier, one of the things we also do is that a lot of RVs uh, use sliders. They use yeah. sliding windows that slide horizontally. Uh, the problem there is, is that you can never leave those open if it's raining outside. Mm -hmm. What we've done with all of our units is that we have installed uh, just crank out windows that uh, uh, shed water. So even with a downpour, it doesn't really and matter how hard. Yeah, exactly. And so that sheds water and allows you to keep airflow through here, whether you're using the power roof vent or you're using some other uh, just fresh air system just without any kind of vent. Now with roof vent, we'll, we'll show you guys later, but the roof vent you were saying that it's a uh, fantastic fan? or Yes, it's a four-speed reversible fantastic fan. It moves quite a bit yeah. of air. And with these windows, and if you wanted to have the doors open, but with these windows setting across on each side of the bed, this can keep you plenty cool during the yeah. day or at night. Great. Yeah. And very, so in, in, very happy in, with that. in climates like what we have here in Colorado, we're fine without an air conditioner and just putting this fan on and cracking a window, but you do offer the ability to put an air conditioner on there. Yes, one of the things that we're able to do that a lot of teardrops can't because we have the aluminum frame is that we have the, the structural integrity in the roof to actually support a roof AC. And we have chosen the Coleman uh, Polar Cub 9.2 BTU roof AC. We actually install a heat strip in it as well, but it sets on top of the roof up there and uh, it is more than adequate for cooling the unit oh, sure. and even the outer room. Uh, that's one of the reasons why if you leave the door open and you are in one of those environments in the deep south or something like that where you want to chase out the humidity and the temps in the outer room, that unit will actually cool everything out there. You can sleep extra people out there. You can use it as living space. Wow. It's just wonderful. So That's this small unit can actually turn into something that can sleep a family of five. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you could tell us a bit about the walls and the insulation. Yeah. Like I was saying, this is an aluminum frame unit. We use one inch and one and a half inch uh, wide aluminum tubes. Every joint in here, I mean, every stud, every frame around the windows, the doors, everything like that, all is welded aluminum frame. In between that, between the interior panels and the exterior skin, we put a closed cell pink foam insulation that's very similar to what they use in the residential uh, markets in, in construction. It has an R5 value, yeah. insulates this unit very, very well. Yeah. Yeah. 
whether in the summertime and you're using the AC and you're wanting to keep it uh, cool in the winter, I'll be honest with you, there's been a couple times where we have slept where it was down close to freezing and we didn't even turn on a heater because just our body Your temperature body and our being in there kept us fairly, yeah. very comfortable. All right, yes. These are just your stabilizer jacks for setting underneath the unit. Okay. And uh, uh, they're handle activated. Uh, you can actually level this unit between this and the front tongue jack. Uh, you, can, you can level the unit at three points okay. and get it completely level on any terrain that you have. All right, so actually, I want to jump back to the tires for a minute. I know I've, I've had other trailers in the past, and typically you'll get the standard steel uh, wheels. They look like stock crap. And they rust after <laughs> And they period. rust. They look, look, you know, especially the white ones, you'll get the rust marks. So, And they you, add weight to your unit. They add weight. Yeah. Yeah, and you have an, this is an awesome set, setup that looks good just coming out of, right off the lot. Right, these are 15 inch aluminum cast wheels. Uh, we do these on every unit. That is the standard wheel. And then to that, that is a 23575R uh, um, AT tire that we mount to that. And then all, both of those are then mounted to our torsion axles. And our axles underneath the unit, the stock unit comes with a 10 degree down Dexter torsion axle under it. And then you can option, as this one has been set up, with the 45 degree down, which gets you another three inches of ground clearance. That's awesome. And the other thing I, I noticed, uh, the axle is at the same level as the rest of the uh, tra trailer. Yeah. So you, you don't have the axle hanging down. So a lot of people like, you know, they have their preferences on what sort of suspension they want and axle configuration. But with this, you're not going to rub it up against anything. That no. Most of the time your axle sets it at the same height as the center line of your hub. Yeah. Okay. So whatever your hub height is, that's where your axle is. But with our 45 degree down torsion axle, the hub center is actually a full four inches lower than where the axle bar is that reaches across. Another thing that we're doing, and this is for people who want to really personalize their own unit, is that these, uh, these hubs on these axles are actually interchangeable. You can change these out to put on a, a uh, lug pattern a bolt pattern that would match your vehicle's tires and wheels if you wish. So not only can you upsize the tire, you can actually change the wheels out to match your vehicle that you're pulling. So out. even more customization for the guys who want to match their Jeep or their Tacoma and exactly. four, Forerunner to their... Right. And so that lets anybody take a VRV flyer and basically personalize it yeah. to their exact tow vehicle, their needs, whatever yeah. it is that they want. That's fantastic. Cool. You know, the one thing I noticed too is you're just the finish, how everything's wrapped around. There's no mm -hmm. seams here that's going to right. leak or anything like that. Every place that you can reduce the the need for trim by having an open seam yeah. is a place where you are eliminating a future issue with your unit. You'll find that our, our roof is actually a one piece sheet of aluminum, 60 inches wide. It goes all the way from the very front edge of the front, yeah. lower edge of the front, all the way up and over and then we actually bend it and bring it down to the door opening so there's no trim that has to go across there there are no seams in the roof that can leak whatsoever then we actually take this side metal as you showed said and we bring it all the way from the front all the way back and we bend it and bring it to the door opening yep. as well so the door frame actually acts as your terminating points for both these uh, panels in your models, what I love is you have this rear hatch door that gives you the protection. Mm -hmm. I'm about 6'3". Yeah. Lots of room. Uh, so, But it gives you the protection from rain. You can sit out here and cook. So why don't you just walk us through the back configuration? Okay. One of the reasons, yeah, the biggest reason for the rear hatch door is exactly what you stated. You know, not all the time the weather cooperates with you. So whether you're out here, you're already set up or you're setting up for the first time, or maybe you're somewhere along the road and you want to pull over and prep a quick meal, grab some sandwiches, put something together. Being able to throw up this rear hatch door does two things. It gets you out of the sun if it's sunny, and it gets you out of the rain if it's raining. Yeah. And that's the reason why we like this. Uh, it, it's, the hydraulic cylinders are fantastic. And this will definitely support itself for many, many years without any issues there whatsoever. But you know, a lot of teardrops don't even have rear doors. They only have side entry doors. And one of the things that we wanted to do with the VRV flyer in that way was be unique. We wanted to get away from some of the teardrop shape and some of the rear galley setups that they have because they restrict so much of your interior space. 
You'll find here in a moment when we shoot inside, you'll see how much more room you actually have inside of a flyer yep. than you do inside of some of the other teardrops. The rear hatch door just makes a lot of sense uh, for being able to load and unload gear. You get this thing up, it's out of your way, you walk around the unit, you don't have to walk around doors or anything like that. You're bringing your gear boxes, you're loading them in, you get access here, you get through the side entry door, which we've oversized the side entry door even, uh, in order to load your gear and be able to operate, you know, efficiently out of your unit. Yep. So that's the reason for this. Um, but it also serves as the cover, as we said, against the weather, whether it's sun or rain, for our galley drawer. Now this is a drawer that actually is a 40 inch deep drawer that goes back into the sofa base and under the bed. And inside of this galley drawer, this is a slide top. You'll see that the top slides. Well, actually, you can keep everything in here. It's uh, 10 inches deep. We keep our stove in there. We keep our utensils in there, our cookware in there. We keep spices. We keep plates. We keep anything that you may need that when you're prepping a meal, you can keep right here in your galley drawer. So you have this top that slides. You also have these two available drawers once you have your stove set on top. Yep. The other thing is, is that these drawers have dividers in them that are removable. Yep. Uh, you can either remove them or you can adjust them. And I saw there's, whatever a, there's a couple more need. here. So you have the option to yes. put it through here too. Yes. And if you don't wish to use it as a galley drawer and you wish to use it for just other type of camping equipment or yep. whatever you wish to do, that's fine too. So that this is going done. to, this is giving you the option to use this however you want. Exactly. You have the drawer uh, di uh, dividers if you want to use them. If you want to put a Coleman stove that's going to take up that space this way, you still have plenty of vertical height to mm -hmm. put pots and pans on top of this like we did here. Right. Um, and your storage just opens up to, you know, so much more. And the great thing is with these dividers, um, you know, some people might have the smaller stoves. Right. And they don't need to take up the whole space. Exactly. So then you can keep it when you're going off road or anything like, like that, you're able to keep your stuff all, all in their compartments. Mm -hmm. It's not bouncing around and rolling around. All right. And also about this, our, our drawer guides that we use, these things are rated to 300 pounds extended and 500 pounds enclosed. So, I mean, they're, they're sufficient for actually being able to yep. load this thing down and be able to use it and yep. not worry about failure there. Yeah. Then when it is in the closed position up inside, we actually have this. I think people are very familiar with these yep. rubberized latches. You see them on Yeti coolers yeah, in, is, yeah. in the front end of Jeep vehicles. And we use this to actually hold the drawer closed uh -huh. during transport. That's fantastic. And actually, I just noticed mm -hmm. a window in the rear door. A lot of times, mm -hmm. people don't put that in there. In there. This is, you can sit in bed and right. look outside. And all of the windows, both these, uh, the windows that we use on the side, the window in the side entry door, and this window are all at the max dark tint. So you can see through them from the outside, I mean, from the inside out very easily, but from the outside in, they really obscure your vision of yeah. what's inside the so unit. So you have your privacy inside. Exactly, yeah. Now, another thing in this area right here to go along with the alley is you're gonna find a 120 volt outlet. Just like we, I said, you can never have enough outlets. We have the 120 volt outlet on the outside. Right here, when you have this door open, you actually have access to another 120 volt outlet here. Whether it's something that you want to use during your meal prep or anything like that, or at night you want to put electrical light out yep. here if you wish, you have an outlet right here at your disposal for, the, for that purpose. Okay. Tell us about your taillights. Okay. They're unique. Well, it, it is. I mean, seeing strip lights now, LED strip lights on RVs, uh, it, it's still, in a lot of, for a lot of manufacturers, it, it is unique. But what we did with this particular light, we sourced this for a particular reason. And that is, is, not only does it operate as your signal lights for the running of the vehicle and everything like that, but this particular light actually lights up from a switch on the inside. This is, uh, we actually use this element for lighting up the tended adder room yeah. if you install it or just having a light at the back of the unit yeah. during the evening hours. So we have that on a switch separated out uh, from the uh, from the purposes of the tail light yeah uh, for that and what I love is I don't know how many times you hook up your trailer and you go back and check to see if the blink the your blinkers signals are working signal lights on and it's not on and it's the old school bulbs and you got to carry the, you'll never have this no no 
Now these things last forever now. Yep. I love this technology. And we have, like I said, we've incorporated throughout the unit. Yep. All of our interior lighting, exterior lighting, everything that we do is all LED now. Yep. And it, you know what? Not only is it long lasting, but the deal is, is it's a much lower draw on your battery right. system. I mean, it uses one tenth of what incandescent bulbs do. Yep. And so they, they burn cooler, they burn longer, and they draw a, a lot less energy. Go ahead. So there's a couple things, no, there's a lot of things I love about this trailer, but every guy loves a remote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you can so, keep up with them, you love them. It's not for a TV. You don't need a TV in this model. You should be camping. Exactly. You don't need a TV in this environment. And not, not here. No. Uh, but tell us about this. Okay. Uh, the power roof vent that we use, this comes standard in every unit. You don't have just a crank up vent. Yeah. We actually install a power roof vent as standard equipment in every flyer. Now this is the Air Excel brand. It's their Max Air. And this is a remote controlled, four speed reversible fan. Uh, basically based on whatever you need you can either increase your your wind speed yeah by just using the remote or decrease it and actually you can close and power off the unit right here all with the remote and it has the uh, the lid to the vent actually is activated as a power lid as well oh, so you wow. know you don't have yeah. to crank it open or anything like that to turn the fan on that's great everything is done right here fantastic yeah. and you know, one of the things we we're talking about earlier with your windows and how they open up mm -hmm. uh, you can crack those windows turn this on oh, and yes. I, I've been in a trailer with these and felt like my hair was moving yeah the, exactly. the, the suction it makes the crosswind right that you get out of that will cool you down with right problem. and also another great thing about this one too is it is reversible as well so if for some reason you need to push air out of the yeah. unit not necessarily drafting new air in but pushing air out you want to remove the heat from the unit as fast as possible you just turn this on in the reverse mode and it actually pulls the air fresh air in and pushes it out yeah yeah so and Go ahead. That's just something that we thought was a necessity yeah. in every unit and didn't feel like there was any reason to shortcut this vehicle by yeah. not installing something. So there's no, this is not going to get stuffy. This is going to, you're just going to have fresh air coming through. It's just, yes. and I see on it, your ceiling, four LED lights. Yes. We actually do the LED puck lights for our ceiling applications. Uh -huh. uh, now this is activated off of, the front two lights are activated off a switch there. So at the side entry door, you can come in, turn that on, and you have immediate light in the coach. And if you leave out of that door, you can turn it off and turn all the lights on. Here at the back end, it's set up the same way. The rear two lights are set up right here, uh, and you can turn those on and off from this position as well. So that you have access to turn on and light up the coach wherever you are. Yep. Um, so yes, that's one of the things too that we decided we, we had to have. And what is the, the con there's many configurations for power. Mm -hmm. So someone may want to install sol solar. Um, what are the different options that you have okay. ready to go? All right, this unit comes standard. Again, this is standard the way it's set up with a 30 amp electrical system for shore power. Okay. Uh -huh. It also has a complete 12 volt system run through an inverter built into the sofa base a little bit forward where you have access to your breakers, your fuses, and anything like that. But this unit also is pre-set up. Uh, we already installed the outlet. It's a ZAMP uh, outlet for a solar uh, panel set up as well. And that, that outlet we'll see over here on the side is right next to your 30 amp uh, inlet. You get a 20 foot uh, service cord that's standard and basically it just hides into the sofa base as well into the electrical compartment and you extract it for hooking up uh, if you have access to shore power. So it's as simple as getting there and hooking it up? But That's it. And what if you wanted to have it permanently hardwired in? Uh, you can do that through that outlet. We can also, if a person wants that type of setup, we can reroute that wiring to the roof if they want to do a mat panel on top. Gotcha. We try to set it up here on the side because we don't know with the rack systems and things that people use if they'll actually utilize a mat, uh, a mat panel or if they want something that sets out beside their unit that they can position towards the sun and away from trees or shade. Because a lot of times you want to park your unit in the shade, but if you're going to utilize your solar, you may need to take it out away from the exactly. shaded area. Yeah. Especially yeah, in the woods, sometimes you got to get to where the sun yes, is because exactly. you're in the shade. But uh, the options are, are there. So if your preference is to have something on your roof at all times, always wired in, mm -hmm. you can do it. If you're someone that's going to put a roof rack on, 
there's many other options that you can use and you can have the portable ones. Right. Oh, and another thing about our electrical. Our battery is actually enclosed into this electrical compartment built into this sofa base up here. We use a gel battery. We don't use a, a standard uh, liquid. So no, uh, no ventilation needed. No ventilation needed. Uh, they last longer. They give safer. you better surface. Uh, yes, <laughs> and they're much, much, much safer. And that comes as standard with every, every flyer as well. So you're not sitting on a ticking time bomb? No. You're not laying down on it. It's safe. You have your power. And the awesome thing, it frees up the tongue. Yes, exactly. Again, you don't yeah. have that battery case out front. Yeah. You have room for to utilize that space for something else. Yeah. And it keeps it away from other people pilfering. That's right. Or disturbing your battery setup or anything Especially, like that. Especially, you know, if you have it in storage and yes. stuff like that. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Um, it's locked up and secured yeah. inside your unit. Yeah. All right. So I always hated that I have to take my battery out, bring it into my garage. I would usually put it on a piece of wood. I'm not sure if that's a wise tale, but <laughs> that's what my dad taught me. Put on a piece of wood and have a trickle charger so that in spring, I got a working bat battery. Do you have right. to do that with this one? No, actually, uh, through our inverter system that, uh, and the shore power, anytime that you're actually plugged into shore power, it's charging your battery. Anytime that you're pulling down the road through the seven-way hookup, if you have the electrical brakes and the seven-way uh, pin system, you're actually getting a charge to your battery as well. So, yes, you can actually set this unit up, winterize it, just plug it in. Uh, periodically or I guess you could leave it plugged in and it is always feeding the battery throughout your your stored time so you pull it in your garage you plug plug it in every now and then make exactly. sure you got a charge and you're good to go you never come out to a dead battery yeah yeah fantastic all right so why don't we show everyone how this packs up and slides away and then we'll talk about some stuff in the inside okay the interior that sounds great I'll just take care of that And this is not particle board. <laughs> no, no, no. This is actually three-quarter inch Baltic birch. Now, is that is that lighter than? The... No, the uh, the birch that we actually use it's a it's a it has a lot of structural integrity. Okay. Matter of fact, it actually has more structural integrity than yellow pine or most of the pine plywood that you use. Okay. Its weight is similar, but it has a lot more density in it. And there's a number of layers here. You can actually see that this is laminated to ten layers. So this has, uh, like I said, this is a lot more structurally uh, yeah. strong than anything else that you, you normally see in, in RV construction. Yeah. But you just put your stove away inside your galley drawer, throw in your pots and pans, pull your lid back over, close it up, and latch it. And that's it, it's out of the way. So easy. All right, so we're all stowed away. One thing I noticed is that there's so much room here. That, you know, there's a you can put shoes or you know anything you want to pack up, like your lawn lawn chairs. But you have this massive area that goes all the way to the front. Yes. And at night, when you actually have the unit in the sleeping position and you're ready to crawl in for the night, you need a place to put your shoes and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, this is not only a great place, but your luggage, whatever you might carry up here during the day or during transport, at night you have ample place to put it, get it in out of the way. It's both here and also in that front storage area. Those cabinets up there are 24 inches deep and run floor to ceiling. So we try to provide you with all the place, all the space you need yeah. to actually be comfortable inside the flyer. And one thing I was shocked is when I looked at the front storage, we always, you know, we have two kids, so we always pack up yeah. these little suitcases, the carry-ons, mm -hmm. easily fit into there. We can oh, yeah. easily put them in there. For luggage carrying, that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. But another great thing about that open area that you see right there is that right here at the head of your bed or at the end of your sofa, Inside that area, right in the top shelf, is a 12 volt outlet, two USB ports for charging phone systems, mm -hmm. and also a 120 outlet. In case you wanted to set up a, a uh, laptop up there and yep. maybe watch a movie while you're in bed or something like that, you just plug it in right there and, uh, and just put it up there uh, above your headboard when you're yep. ready to go to sleep. Fantastic. And what about, you know, I see, I'll talk to, tell us a little bit about the um, frame here that I see. You got an exposed. Oh, aluminum in there. Okay. This is a little idea that um, it actually serves two purposes. I'm not going to lie to people. It's not just visual and it's not just for the customer. It actually helps us in our construction of the unit and in maintaining the unit. 
all of the wiring, this is actually a wire chase. This is a 9-0 gauge aluminum uh, a piece of material that we screw both to the sidewalls and to the roof trusses. And it serves as a gear hanging apparatus. The holes are punched in there for the purpose of being able to hang gear bags or whatever else you need anywhere along that length. And it is strong enough. I mean, you can literally hang from it if you wish. I mean, it's good for 100 pounds easily. Yeah. But the other thing that it does too is that we loom and run all, all of our wiring for our running lights and all of our switches front to back is actually encased inside of this and not inside the wall and not running through frame members. Uh, that reduces the, the uh, long-term effect of vibration, wearing on wiring insulation, running through frame members that eventually turns into a short. It also, should you ever have an issue for one reason or another, is that you can gain access to your wiring here without taking your wall panels all apart. You don't have to completely disassemble the unit. You can pull these wire chases down by simply removing the screws and there's all of your wiring right there for changing anything out that you might need to. You thought about everything with that one. <laughs> really tried to. And I think the fact that, you know, you can really customize this. So if someone wants to buy one of those nettings, mm -hmm. the nets, you can put it there if you want to put your shoes there, if you want to put your iPad up there and right. whatever else, or sweater. You do it's any there. of those ceiling nets across up there, you can hang it from side to side. Yes, those th it, it will literally handle 100 pounds plus. Wow. So, yeah, that was a great feature for us. We love it. Our customers have loved it so far and are making use of it. I have a gentleman who fly fishes. He keeps all of his fly rods strung up there. Uh, he just kind of loops them in and hangs them up high and keeps them out of the way so that they don't get crushed or stepped on or, or by anything. So, I mean, that. anything that you need that, yeah. to kind of keep out of the way and yeah. you want to keep secure, this is a great place to do it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Day, daytime. So far, everything that we've seen in the unit has been this in a bed position. And this is a queen size bed. It's 58 inches between the walls. It, this bed platform is actually 78 inches long, uh -huh. so six and a half feet by five feet wide. This is a queen bed. And I see there's like, you know, it's, it's sitting on a real strong... Uh... Yes. This base right here actually flips over base on top of the sofa base and the cushions fold up to make a sofa yeah. for daytime use. In other words, if you're not, if you want to sit upright, read a book, work on a computer off of this flip up table that we have here or across from the sofa, uh, eat off of that, whatever. If you wanna be in an upright position rather than a prone position, uh, that's the reason why we have this set up. But this flips over to that, but when it's in the sleeping position, as you noted, we actually have it setting on two by three aluminum legs that are bolted to the wall. So you don't have to set any legs, there aren't any kind of mobile braces or anything like that that can fail or shift on you. You actually just flip the panel over and it comes to rest on it. So there's no problem with uh, 200 pounds sitting there. No, no, not <laughs> at all. Again, as you can see, you see anywhere. the whole unit move, but yep. you're not seeing that bed go anywhere. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, can we uh, fold it up and see how it sure, looks? Sure, absolutely. Uh, something else that I want to show you about this sofa base is that this is not just a sealed cabinet here. In case you have anything that you need to access from your electrical compartment up in that front, underneath that front door access panel up there is your battery, your controller, and all of your shore power uh, cords and everything like that all rest in that compartment. And then in here, in case for any reason you need a little extra storage or you need access to this, uh, your galley drawer and can't open it, you have access to all of that through here. Then actually, you want to take your mattress, you can fold it up against the wall, you raise the panel up, pull the mattress out, and let the panel down. And that converts it from a queen bed to a 30 inch wide sofa base. And you can, four adults can sit on that thing. Oh, easily. And another thing is, is that during the day, you can take the sofa back if you wish, and that makes a 30 inch wide uh, day bed. 
So you can lay down, take a nap there if you wish, without necessarily having to set up the entire Or if you're point. camping by yourself, you can just keep right. it like that. And you can keep it like that. Put your gear over or on the side. Mm -hmm. And then to go along with that, we have this flip up table. that makes a great eating or working platform. So you can sit there if you're like myself with a laptop and I'm traveling, I can sit there and work. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you can sit there and eat, kids can play. Right, you can set the children here, you can actually put a movie onto a computer for them on the laptop and let them sit and watch that while you're out here around the campfire if you want. Okay, so now we're inside. Let's take a look. I was shocked by how much storage there is at the front of this. It's really deceiving until you get in here and take a look. So let's uh, let's see how you can potentially use these. Everything basically in the radius we've turned into a vertical cabinetry and storage right here. Uh, like I said, that's 24 inches deep. Uh, so there's plenty of room for luggage, uh, personal equipment, anything that you may want to put up there, uh, even TVs, radios, whatever you might want to do. And as you can see, there's a 120 outlet here. You have a 12 volt outlet here with two USBs for phone charging and such. It's all set right here. So it's up by the way. You can set everything out of the way. It doesn't have to be in your bed or on your sofa or anything like that. So this is just basically a multiple use space. Then over here, the same depth of cabinetry is actually available to you to stow your linens, uh, sleeping bags, uh, personal effects, uh, clothes, uh, another luggage bag, anything that you may want to keep closed out of the way or whatever, you can actually put into this side of the cabinet here. But then one of the things that we decided that we were going to do with this area is we wanted to incorporate a space for a portable toilet. And so you'll find that this cabinet here, although it doesn't have to be used for that purpose, we, we took the aluminum frame out across the front so that you could basically pull out a portable toilet here to be able to use uh, during the day hours or along the road if you need. Now once it's into a sleeping position and it's closed into this cabinet, you don't have access to it. But as long as you don't have it in the bed position, this can be a great place to store a portable toilet. But other than that, it's great for gear. It's great for your boots. It's great for tools. Yeah. It's great for anything that you need. It is on the aluminum floor. You don't have to worry about anything uh, that might have a, a hard metal exterior. What it might do to your cabinetry, you want to just put that down here and just let it ride. We're on the driver's side. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the mechanical side of the unit over here. This is where in, whether you, uh, if you're not rustic camping like this, if you're actually into a park area or, or something like that where you would have access to shore power, everything like that is generally set up on the road side of the unit. And we did the same thing. Uh, basically your 30 amp electrical service for shore power is all right here. Behind this is your 20 foot service cord. You just extract this out, plug it into your electrical shore uh, source, and then when you're ready to put it up, you just basically feed it back into there. And this feeds into that electrical part, compartment that we showed you and was talking about inside. The other thing that we had talked about earlier was uh, solar and about doing solar panels and having a solar panel setting out here. That's what this little outlet right here is for. This is from Zamp and this is a, just a little plug in. Uh, you take your solar panel with your charge controller and everything like that and you basically just plug it in right here and it goes straight to your battery and keeps your battery stowed. Then, you know, for leveling a unit, uh, chocks, blocks, or any kind of other gear that you might want to carry, we have this outside storage compartment. Now this storage compartment is actually 24 inches across. It's 26 inches tall and is about 30 inches deep. And that's where you can keep a lot of extra gear. Uh, things like I said, for leveling, chocks, things like that, uh, that you need immediate access to when you pull into your campsite. Perfect. And again, you still have the stepping. Uh, yep. And you have here. the fender step on fender this step. side because you want access to both sides of your roof. One little thing I love is just the added little details. The VRV cut out in the corner. Yep, that's actually laser cut out out of 063 aluminum. Uh, that protects that corner area uh, from any type of damage.